All right, y'all. We are back. This is part two of Doctors for Hire. This is a collaboration between Darko Media Group, Docs Outside the Box, and locumstory.com. And in this video series, we are talking about Dr. Renee getting back into finding a locums gig that is uh, pretty consistent. Yeah. And I dropped the bombshell on you the last time. And uh, that'll that you'll see that in the uh, in the recap. But uh, yeah, we <laughs> we're really excited to bring you this second part um, because this gets a little bit more in depth about what we're looking for in locums and just kind of how you talk with recruiters. Yeah. So, folks, when you're watching this, don't get too caught up in the details. But basically, Dr. Renee is talking with the recruiters. There's some details that, you know, you're going to hear that you may not understand the lingo. It's OK. Just understand and pay attention to how Dr. Renee conducts the interviews, the questions she's asking, how she responds, what she says she wants versus not want. And pay attention to how clear she is about that. Yeah. That's what I want to get you. That's what I want you guys to get from this. All Anything right. else you want to add? Oh, and don't forget that you can find the video version of Doctors for Hire on YouTube on our Docs Outside the Box podcast YouTube channel. It is currently live just for you to watch. So if you're enjoying the audio experience, that's great. But there's an even better video experience, and you should really check it out now. Let's, uh, let's on with the show. Let's run the tape, guys. <laughs> Previously on Doctors for Hire. I'm going to be looking for my own locums gig soon. You, you probably going to think I'm a little crazy. Something definitely outside the box. Maybe instead of just considering places in the U.S. that we consider places abroad. Hey, sir. Like, I'm not going front. She threw me off. I know it's a lot for him to think about. For me, I'm using the locumstory.com website which is an online educational resource about locum tenants. What I'm gonna be talking to the recruiters about, you know, how much I wanna get paid. I don't really wanna do clinic, like office, for the most part. Your boy's gonna have to work too. If we can do something that's very similar, I think that'll be really good for our lifestyle, for the kids. Mm -hmm. And now, part two of Dr. Renee's locum story. I'm Amy Hagan. I work for Comp Health Division of CHG Healthcare. I'm Gavin Hunter. I work for Global Medical Staffing. I am Caitlin Maruis, and I am on the OBGYN team at Weatherby, and I have been with the company just over seven years now. Thanks so much for joining me um, on this call, Caitlin. I really appreciate meeting with you. Um, just have a few questions because I'm looking for a new locums assignment. Um, and, you know, I'd love to just kind of hear what your agency has to offer. Okay. Um, so one of the questions that I did have was, you know, how long, like, would it take for me to become credentialed um, to work with your, with your particular agency? Um, and do you facilitate that process? So the initial credentialing with Weatherby is physician led because you have to fill out our online application and we're legally not able to do that for you. However, once that is done, you never have to do it from scratch again. And I've seen physicians credentialed in as little as 24 to 48 hours and sometimes a couple of weeks, just depending on the urgency of the assignment. I mean, I've seen credentialing for, you know, for a doctor happen in as little as a couple days. In fact, last week alone, I, I had someone, you know, interview on a Monday and they were working by Friday. So okay. that was, they'd never worked for us before. And do you, do you have opportunities around the country or are you just regional? We work nationwide, um, even as far away as Hawaii and Alaska. And right now the locums business is booming and we have more than 150 openings all across the country. I'd say okay. in more than 50% of the states. We definitely have opportunities across the country. Global is a little different to, to some of the other agencies and the fact that we, we work literally globally. Um, so we, we've got a domestic side as well as our international um, clients around the world. So mostly, you know, primarily English to English speaking so that we don't add the language barrier. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we've got, I mean, everywhere from, you know, Arkansas to, I was trying to think of a Z there, but there wasn't anything there. Um, yeah, all, all the way, to let's go, you know, New York and East Coast. Like we we've got the whole country. Yeah. So Wisconsin. There you go. I think. Yes, that's Wisconsin. Started. That's right. I can. Or Wyoming. That's the last one. Wyoming. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we go all the way to Wyoming. Uh, right. Alaska to Wyoming. Right. There you go. We're just working on a thing for uh, um, cruise ships. So oh. 
Um, so that's opening up for us where you'll be able to just be the, the OB on a, on a cruise ship, depending on how mm. long that's out to port. So um, we're still working on the details for that and how it would work, but um, that's something that, that's coming down the pipeline. So that could be a lot shorter as opposed to the long-term ones as well. So I could be the love boat doctor. Right? <laughs> that works perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, there's definitely some, uh, some exciting things going on. So right now I'm licensed in Pennsylvania, but I'm thinking about going to a different state. If I needed to get licensed in a different state, what assistance would your agency provide for that? So we have a designated licensing department and once we're able to get the license approved to process, you will have a designated person from our licensing department who would pre-fill the application for you and then would help to facilitate the whole process and you know, with sending supporting documents and getting verifications and communicating between you and the board to help take those administrative duties off of you that everybody loves so much. Yeah. We have a team. Um, that overlooks all states across the country. Each state would have a specific contact that would reach out to you. We, we fill out as much as we can for the app, right? There's, there's certain things we can't sign on your behalf, but anything we can fill out, we will do for you. Anything we can send for you, we will do. We'll collect your information and send it as a complete package. But there's just some things we can't sign that, right. that you'll have to do, but we'll, again, explain it. We highlight everything. We'll make sure that you're completely aware of what you need to do on your end and then we'll take care of the rest. I have a rate range in mind, um, you know, depending on the scope of work. I have a range rate in mind. Now, do you know, like, if I'm able to get a competitive rate and, you know, get that competitive rate without necessarily selling myself short? We want to, we don't want to treat you like a, like a number or a, or worse, a dollar sign, right? Like we want to go, hey, are you happy on your assignment? If not, why? How can we make it better, right? Like so, um, but then we also will do a contract buy if you're like, I love this place. Like, hey, we'll facilitate with the discussions with the clients say, hey, she wants to stay there. Um, what could a permanent opportunity look like? And we'll come back and forth with you. Normally we'll stay out of the financial side of it because that's personal to you, right? Like you might be able to come up with a giant, you know, we'll do some fishing for you and kind of go, hey, what are they looking for? What's their high ends and things like that and let you know, but that's normally left between you guys and uh, to figure out, so. Rates are, they've been on the increase recently um, and it varies per location for the type of opportunity it is, the volume, um, the size of the hospital system. Um, you know, some big hospital systems have more, you know, bigger budget and some smaller, more rural communities, FQHCs, they just don't have as big of a budget. So it's really dependent upon the client's budget. Um, you know, the malpractice territory they're in can affect that as well, because the, you know, the locums company does cover the malpractice, but the client incurs that cost. So the higher the malpractice territory, the more expensive the malpractice is in OB. We all know it's the most expensive in the industry. Right. So we obviously want pe people to feel fairly compensated, but at the same time, keep them marketable. But there is also another way, I'm not sure if the other agencies have mentioned it, but we do what's called reverse marketing as well, right? So mm. if you tell us where you want to go, what you want to work, and it can be a specific location, right? Like we can go out and see if we can find you a position that isn't open right now um, and, and see if we can you know, get you your dream job, right? So okay. that's another option that we can do as a, as a local company. Oh, interesting. Okay, so, excellent, yeah. so, excellent. Yeah. Well, okay. thank you so much. Well, thank you. It was good thank talking you. to you. You too. Thank you so much, Amy. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Of course. Yeah. So what's the next step from here? So if you are, you know, definitely interested in pursuing some locums opportunities, we could set up a time to kind of narrow down what locations you would be interested in, go over the, you know, current opportunities we have available. Mm -hmm. I have a habit of sending a little bit of everything because, right. you know, often you might think there's one location or one type of opportunity you're interested in, but sometimes once you see a little bit more of what's out there, um, you might change your mind. And if not, we just kind of narrow it down and find what's going to be the best fit. And then once we agree upon rates and availability, always with your permission, we would present them with your CV. And okay. that kind of opens the door to, you know, move the process forward with setting up an interview. And then if all goes well from there, that's when we 
start the credentialing and mm -hmm. um, the licensing and all that fun stuff. Okay. Hey. Hey, how did the meeting go? Good, good. Ah, good. I like that look. I like that look. So it went all right? <laughs> yeah, it went. I mean, it was like three interviews back to back, so it was like three hours, but. All right, know. look, let's, let's get outside. Let's talk. Okay. And go from there, right? Okay. Do you drop so. the kids off? Yeah. I dropped the kids off. Um, listen, let me just leave it to you like that. You left me without, um, first of all, it's not water play for them. Oh, Lord. So now he's there know. in school. I don't know what the schedule is. With his water is. play stuff on, but, you know, it is what it is and stuff, so. He'll be but fine. They're dropped off. So finding a locum tenens assignment is fairly easy. Um, for me, I'm using the locumstory.com website. They have a number of locums agencies that you can work with. Once you find a locum tenens agency that you like, you contact them and you'll talk to a recruiter about the things that you want. So what kinds of assignments that you want, how often you want to work, maybe even pay that you're looking for. And once you kind of figure that out, your recruiter will then send you assignments that kind of fit that bill. Um, you look through the assignments and you essentially let them know which ones you're interested in and they'll send out your CV to those facilities. Uh, the locum tenants agencies themselves do also have a, an application or credentialing process that they go through. So um, they just want to collect information more about you, maybe the um, current licenses that you hold. And if you don't have a, a license in a specific state, they can help you obtain that license as well. Um, once you find a facility potentially that you are interested in, then like I said, after they've sent out your CV to that facility, that facility will then work with the locum tenens agency to, to kind of connect you both together. Um, from there, the process can look a number of ways, but let's just say that the facility and you will in some way, shape or form make contact. So that might mean a Zoom conference, a talk on the phone, or even actually going out to the facility and interviewing with them. One thing I got to notice about you, Dr. Renee, is you speak so well. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks so well. No, but you described the whole process really good at the end. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, what I really liked about this particular segment was talking to the recruiters in particular. But um, yeah, as you can see, the audience can see, I, I was seriously uh, into talking to the global medical staffing recruiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing I got to say real quick, quick story is when I started doing locums in 2012, there wasn't a locumstory.com, or at least right. I didn't know about it. And I had so many questions as to who was going to take care of my license. How was I going to get paid? You remember when I f first started working locums, I'm like, so how do you get paid? Do they just put like money underneath your pillow and stuff? <laughs> right. Do you get paid first or do you get paid afterwards? Right. You know, how do I know if surgeon A should be getting is getting paid the same amount of surgeon B? Mm -hmm. A lot of these things are shrouded you know, on purpose, so to speak. Yeah. And the reason I like locumstory.com is because, and you know, Obviously, we're partnering with them, but for real, this is legit. I like how they make everything very transparent. Yeah. And that's a big a big plus for me. Yeah. I, I do appreciate that, the ability to compare, um, you know, the different locums agencies um, by specialty, you know, um, comparing them by, you know, what they have available, compensation. Um, and I think that's really important for people, especially when you're first coming into the locum space and you really have no clue because we are not necessarily trained to think in this way. It's a very entrepreneurial way of thinking. So, um, but yeah, I, uh, the only thing I am uh, really excited about though is what's going to happen next after I've talked to uh, all of these recruiters. Mm, we have to see. <laughs> Dr. Nee puts his foot down and says, woman, you ain't going nowhere. Okay, but nowhere. you said that the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, y'all just going to have to wait and figure out what happens next, all right? But listen, we'll catch you guys on part three. Next week. Peace.